Hello again and welcome to another in our continuing series of 5-Minute Fly the Wing Flight Maneuver videos. This month it's all about stalls, recognizing and recovering from a stalled flight condition. We require a certain amount of wind over the wings to produce lift. Below this minimum flight airspeed, which is dependent on gross weight, load factor, and density altitude, the smooth airflow over the wings is disrupted and lift degenerates rapidly. A stall occurs when a wing exceeds its critical angle of attack. This can happen at any airspeed, in any attitude, at any power setting. The objectives in performing intentional stalls are to familiarize you with the conditions that produce stalls, to recognize an approaching stall, and to develop the habit of taking prompt, preventative, or corrective action. Unlike other maneuvers we practice like ground reference or steep turns, you're not trying to demonstrate how to make the airplane stall, but rather that you have an awareness of what induces a stall and how to prevent or recover from inadvertent stall entry. A sense of change in direction or speed can be helpful in detecting the onset of a stall. The sound of our engine in a fixed pitch prop plane, lessening of wind noise over the airplane, and the mushy, lagging response to control inputs are all signs of an impending stall. Now, just before the stall occurs, buffeting, uncontrollable pitching, or vibrations may begin. To recover from a stall, the first step is always to reduce the angle of attack to less than the critical angle of attack, which is what creates the stalled condition in the first place. In most training aircraft, this reduction an angle of attack is modest, you don't have to dive the plane toward the ground to get the wing flying again. It's usually a matter of reducing the angle of attack to just barely below the horizon to once again produce lift. The second step in stall recovery is prompt but smooth application of maximum allowable power. Although you must realize it's the reduction of the angle of attack that gets that wing flying again. The addition of power creates forward thrust which gets more air flowing over the wing and helps to recover from the stall, but power alone won't help you if you're still beyond the critical angle of attack with the wing. Finally, straight and level flight should be regained with coordinated use of all controls. Alright, let's put some of this knowledge to work as we recognize and recover from a stalled flight condition in the airplane. Well, we're in the skyline today demonstrating stalls. We've got an emergency landing area under us. Borrego Springs Airport will serve nicely. We've done our clearing turns, position report on the radio, and a sweep check of mags, master, and mixture fuel. All looks good. We're ready to demonstrate our first stall, which will be power off or approach to landing stall. The power off stall is designed to simulate what happens when we're on final approach or in the pattern. We've got full flaps in, we've reduced power, we've started to descent, and we see something or otherwise get distracted and pitch the nose up. Usually it's a slow, gradual movement, and we don't even notice it. Could be on a high density altitude day, we exceed the critical angle of attack with the airplane. There's the stall buzzer about five to ten knots before the wing's actually stalled. If we continue to bring back pressure, We'll feel the mushiness of the controls and the warbling of the air over the wing. And then finally the wing stalls and the nose will drop. You can bring in some power and get that wing flying again just by lowering the nose below the critical angle of attack. We want to resolve that stall condition and not induce a secondary stall. The power on stall is designed to simulate what happens when we're on a departure, climb, or taking off and we exceed the critical angle of attack with the airplane. Because I don't want to stand this thing on its tail, I've already slowed the airplane to our climb airspeed. I'll start to climb out, simulate a climb, and then I'll bring in full power. Now even though I'm going to have full power in, the fact that I'm exceeding the critical angle of attack with the wing is going to create a stalled flight condition. Like any maneuver while I'm doing this, I'm in VFR conditions, I still need to look outside for traffic at all times. So I'm flying the airplane, looking for traffic, I'm exceeding the angle of attack, something distracts me, or I'm otherwise not paying attention. I hear that stall warning buzzer about 5 to 10 knots before the plane is actually stalled. Now I'm feeling some mushiness and warbling in the wings as the airflow separates. There the wing is stalled and I resolve the stall by getting the nose below the horizon and get that wing flying again. This airplane, if I do about three fingers on the glare shield, that sight picture is going to resume flying condition. Now here are some common errors to be aware of when you're working on stall recognition and recovery. 
Failure to adequately clear the area. Inability to recognize an approaching stall condition through feel for the airplane. Premature recovery before the plane is actually stalled. And keep in mind, in most light airplanes, that stall buzzer is going to go off about 5 to 10 knots above stall speed. Inadequate scanning or inadequate rudder control resulting in an unintentional wing low condition during entry is another common error. An exaggerated nose up attitude during entry or inadvertent secondary stall occurring during recovery. An excessive forward elevator pressure during recovery resulting in a negative load on the wings. This is real common when first learning stall recovery in most light airplanes. You only need to get that nose a couple inches under the horizon to get the wing flying again. There's a lot more on stalls and spins in the FAA's airplane flight handbook which you can download for free from my website. Practice effective stall recovery in any new airplane you're transitioning to. Fly safely and I'll see you again next month for another 5-minute fly-the-wing flight maneuver video.